So now we can see the more architectural and design based precast product. So today I cover the, this following list here. The liners, standard concrete, and photo engraved foam liners, and GFRC, which is glass fiber reinforcement concrete, and doctor concrete, and transparent translucent concrete, and concrete the module by 3D printing and CNC. Okay, let's talk about the liners, the standard concrete. So how can this the linear pattern created? So you can just kind of see that sometimes you can see the texturized concrete over the surface. So we need to know how we can fabricate this type of texture over the surface. This is a pretty simple process. First, you pour the cast concrete mixture, which is the water, cement, and add mixture in a designed form. After pouring the concrete, you simply place the proposed the liners over it. Okay, the it has the different types of the texture. So means you simply add desired texture over the concrete mix. <laughs> this foam liner come in the many different shape and design. Okay, you can choose in the proper design depending on the, your design concept. And to remove the precast concrete in a foam, it need to vibrate internally and externally. The vibration help to remove air pocket and consolidate the concrete. Okay. Usually when you remove the concrete from the mold, you need to be vibrating because you have to be removed the, some air pocket to get in the extra strings. Also you have to be consolidate the concrete. From the, this kind of process, you can see the texture from the, this project, which is Sun Moon Lake Victor Center. I think this is a kind of very interesting form using the concrete panel. Also, it's when you see in the detail, you can see the wood plank texture. You can also find out this wood plank texture from the College of Design parking space. So depending on the liner's type, sometimes you can get in a very organic pattern, sometimes you can get in a more geometric pattern. Okay. So next type, this is a patterned, the precast concrete. So it, it's more three dimensional, it has a little bit more depth compared to the previous one. It is very similar kind of process as well. First one, you can just kind of place the design the share mold with a three dimensional, a little bit three dimensional, which is a little bit having the depth pattern. After that, you just pour the concrete and then you just kind of vibrating inside and outside to get in the some shell and then you get in the some proposed you getting the desired the concrete pattern here so from the, this region you can just get in the last of a customized pattern basically from the this method so it means you can design whatever you want okay so this is a liner the technique for making the unique concrete finish so next type it is the photo engraved foam liners it is more simple way to print over the concrete. It means it is simply printing over the concrete surface. It is printing method, not like engraving like a previous slide. This printing is dissolving the concrete surface. It has the similar concrete as the etching printing. So it means printing the concrete here and then just put the, some special paper and then just kind of engraving the surface over the top. Okay, so not the engraving, just etching on it, just printing over the surface. Okay, so let's see the some process. You can just place the some the desired pattern and shape or lettering. And then, so these types of the paper you can use in the circle screen or a magnetic vinyl. And then this is a place bottom of the mold, and then you pour the concrete. And then after the cure the concrete, and then you remove the the this paper such as the circle screen or magnetic vinyl and then you cleaned up the surface and then you can get in the desired pattern or lettering over the surface it is once again it's like the circle screen the printing method is pretty similar the lettering simply printing over the surface okay. so next type is GFRC the glass fiber reinforcement concrete it's currently is very popular concrete material. So GFRC is a mixed light weight 
concrete it's very lightweight concrete so usually concrete with a uh, rebar and it requires pretty thick thickness and also pretty heavy as well however currently architect prefer thin layer also want to make it more the complex shape and also need to they need to reduce the the weight because about when they reduce the weight it is much easier to make in any types of the form so from the, this region the GFRC invented the GFRC used the glass fiber for reinforcement instead of steel you can see the top left corner you see that this kind of fabric it is the glass fiber so glass fiber is much lighter and then much thinner so means it is available to make in a thin profile also it is available to make in a very lightweight concrete so usually GFRC the section it is typically around half inch to the three quarter inch it reduced a lot comparing to the the metal rebar steel concrete okay also it is available to make in a very flexible form as well so this broad museum using the GFRC which is glass fiber reinforcement concrete it reduces the overall building weight and able to make the thin profile concrete. Its weight is only 20% of solid concrete. The lightweight benefit is easier to handle on site and reduce the structure load. So means when you're using the, this light structure, light concrete, you can actually reduce the structure, the cost. Also, it is available to make in the lots of a different form because about the thin profile and flexible form next one is UHPC which is the doctor concrete named ultra high performance concrete it combines ultra high performance mineral matrix with the mineral or organic lampers fibers so usually fiber rebar is in pre straight and then thick profile and also previous one we can talk about the GFRC this is a using the the grass fiber, but the UHPC in using the mineral or organic fiber. So means it is much easy to making out the form. So ultra high performance concrete has unique combination of technical characteristic, including the ductility, strength, and durability. Please remember about this part from the doctor concrete. The ductility is easy to bend and strength and the durability so you can just kind of see the test UHPC is element can support the major deformation without cracking it achieve to absorb the energy you can see the when the pushing it they absorb the energy and then it is to dispersing the this energy to the outside okay that's why it is making out of this the curved concrete using the this UHPC how it happened because instead of using the continuous rebar and continuous fiber grass it is using a much smaller figment or much smaller particle to making out the the structure member so means this metal organic reinforcing fiber is easy to disperse the energy to the other side so from the this region it is available to making the this ductility and strong the concrete they can create in using the UHPC Using this kind of method, you can just kind of design this, the curved concrete, the crating. You can see the top and bottom of the, this project. You can see the curved part, curved pattern, the curved panel, and then you can also see the curved panel on the top. It is also it's available to make you know, these types of the panel without uh, any cracking. So next one, you can see the UHPC, the crane gallery, also using the, this concrete panel for the foundation will be done. So this is a kind of very smooth surface, but they don't use the any the plaid concrete the combination. They actually the following the some the smooth surface and then just making the fragmented. They just using this curved concrete to provide this smoothness of the surface. So from the this region, they using the, this UHPC for making out this smoother the concrete the surface, the exterior view. Okay, just on, have to be understanding what is UHPC and why this about the GFRC, what is about the benefit. 
you have to be remember about the UHC, UHPC and GFRC. Okay, just have to be understanding what is different and what is benefit and how we apply. So you have to be understanding to know about this product to apply to your design. Okay. So next one we talk about the retracon concrete. The retracon is combined fiber optic and the fine concrete. You can see the fiber optic on the bottom image. You can simply mix it together and then you can get in the translucent concrete quality here. It's a pretty unique way. So you actually Italian, the pavilion, the during the Shanghai Expo 2010, they used you know, this retracon concrete to the making the this translucent finish. So it means there's a lighting growing from the inside to the outside. Also lighting growing from the outside to the inside. So it means also you can see the very unique feature and unique atmosphere using the, this the retracon product. So you can see the very interesting lighting diffusing from the outside to the inside. Next one, we can talk about the mold for the precast concrete by CNC Laurel. This project is Flower Kindergarten in Korea. The architect designed a modular mold made by CNC Laurel and the concrete mixture pour in a mold, modular mold, which is the reusable mold. It make the mass production possibly by design the mold. So let's see the process. First one they using this reusable mold. So they made the CNC Laurel first and then pouring the rubber over it because they want to make in the reusable mold and then so they actually ready for the, the mass production of the concrete. So they make you know, this mock-up model first and then after they satisfy that this model and then they just keep pouring the concrete to create you know, this the pre-casting panel. Okay? So after making you know, this mass production, simply just attach over the surface to making out the, some the patterned surface in design. So after that, they ask about the, some flower over the into the this the pattern, and then they also designing the some the water drainage system, like this water when you give in the water here, the water just getting out, the water keep coming down and it gives the water and the water keep coming down, but I'm just kind of worried about because water here they just keep staining over the surface, even the water keep coming down, I mean this effect the wall, the surface. This water keeps the sustained this part. I'm just kind of worried about this part, but the architect proposal is interesting to propose that this the creating using the CNC router. Okay. Next type is about the 3D printing. So we using the 3D printing for your the physical model. Also nowadays 3D printing is very popular to making the home and also making the some concrete. So I just kind of brought to the idea how architect using the 3D printer using the architecture design and using the architecture construction okay i just kind of bring it this way the introduction of highly sophisticated computer modeling technologies has meant that designing the shape and form of a building is now only limited by an architect's imagination leading architectural practices such as foster and partners are designing buildings to a level of geometrical complexity unheard of 10 years ago. However, while these forms can often be achieved through off-site factory-based manufacturing techniques, there are significant limits to the levels of intricacy attainable. For example, pouring concrete into a framework can go some way to fulfilling these ambitions, but the reality is that the achievable complexity is still limited. The manufacturing processes required to turn these complex building designs into reality have remained elusive until now. This may be about to change if current research by scientists at Loughborough University comes to fruition. The research group has been inspired by 3D printing, an additive manufacturing process. Here, information created from computer-generated models is exported to a machine which then builds up a model or a component, layer by layer. The virtual model is, in effect, materialized. At Loughborough, instead of using powder and glue, they are experimenting with concrete to create large-scale building components. The research here at Loughborough University gives us tremendous opportunities. We are able to have a little peek into the future to see what the construction technology will be in the next five or ten years.
concrete printing works on the basis of a highly controlled extrusion of cement-based mortar, which is precisely positioned according to computer data. The process has the potential to create architecture that is more unique in form, but crucially, components do not have to be made from solid material, and so can use resources more efficiently than traditional techniques. We have shown how additive manufacturing can be developed to create large structures such as panels and walls with precisely controlled voids within them. For example, the section which you can see being manufactured here could incorporate all the service requirements of a building, such as pipes and cables, in one unit. This process is capable of producing building components with a degree of customization that's not yet been seen. It could create an era of architecture that's um, adapted to the environment and fully integrated with engineering function. Imagine whole sections of a building being printed and then assembled on site with their service provision already installed. Above all, imagine a building whose form and scale could take on limitless possibilities. Okay, just kind of understanding about how you can create the, these types of about, uh, 3D printing concrete and how you adapt uh, this 3D printing concrete to the design. So first you can just see that this is also made by the 3D printing. They just using the, the single module by 3D printer and then assemble, assemble together to make you know, this kind of unique and sculptural looking uh, column. Okay. So now we talk about the basic ingredient precast concrete. So what is the ingredient? The precast concrete. The first one, you need a Portland cement. This is the main, the ingredient. And you need can add in a pigment color. So you can have any pigment color. It means you can make in any color of the concrete. And you need a fine aggregate. The fine aggregate generally consists of the natural sand or crushed stone. And next one is the coarse aggregate. It is mostly using in the gravel and crushed stone. Next one is foam liner. We already discussed to making out the pattern over the your concrete surface. You can add in the foam liner, and then you can add in any finish type. So we talk about the finish type later. And then when you're just adding the, this each individual component, you can just make in the, your precast design. So it means there are lots of different options depending on the combination of each part. Okay. So it means rather than just using the normal concrete, depending on the combination of the, this part. You can make out your own concrete product you can produce. Okay? So first one you can just see the Portland cement color. The Portland cement is the most common type of the cement. It used as the basic ingredient of the concrete. It has the different color option like black, white, and gray. So when you have in this basic ingredient, which is the Portland cement, now you can add in the color. There were lots of different colors available. It's almost every color you can add in the concrete. Also, it has the different the tone of the color from the light of the pigment. So it means more red pigment you can add in, much darker red you can have. But it's less color, le less red pigment you can add. You can add more white, whitish kind of a concrete you can get. So it means even you can choose the color, and depending on the amount of the pigment, you can just get deciding about the tone of the, your color. So using the, this pigment, sometimes you can get in the black concrete, or so you can get in the white concrete. So you can also see the Jubilee Church, you can get the white concrete you can get. Next one, you can use in the blue pigment in it. You can just have in the blue concrete you can design, I think. So it means depending on the, your pigment, now you can actually produce the different types of the color and different types of the finish you can get. Next, we talk about the fine aggregate. Fine aggregate generally consists of the natural sand or crushed stone. The smooth shape of aggregate helps to make the concrete easily. Also, you make a much smoother shape. So, depending on the amount of the fine aggregate, you can decide now what you can decide the smoothness of the, your surface. So, next one is coarse aggregate. The coarse aggregate lends the strength. The gravel and crushed stone constitute the majority of the coarse aggregate. It may be limestone, granite, 
sandstone, marble, quartz, or river gravel. It makes the concrete stronger, but sometimes architects very interesting they expose the discourse aggregate to the surface to provide unique expression. So this one is really interesting kind of project. So project's name is Baojium, is stone sculpture museum in Korea. And then surrounding the project, there was huge stone mountain around. So that's why architect inspired from the, the nature and he want to expressing about the, this natural in expression through the, their architecture. So using the concrete aggregate, you can design a rough concrete wall texture. You can see the project here. You can see the very interesting texture over the surface. Architect intentionally using the huge coarse aggregate and then intentionally exposed to the outside to provide more natural looking concrete surface. It is great to matching the concrete and this huge aggregate and then making it a very unique atmosphere over the space. Also, it is kind of great matching with the uh, sculpture museum and gallery here. So you can see the contrasting between the, this concrete aggregate and actual very refined finishing space. So again, it's kind of very interesting to see the this rough aggregate and the nature also is very well kind of a contrast as well. Okay, it means rather than just kind of using the following the typical method, sometimes you're understanding about uh, this ingredient and then you tweak the idea, you also can make a uh, very unique the expression over the space and expression over the, your material. So next one is the, the finish type. So you can just choose in either smooth finish or rough finish depending on the treatment, right? So you can just kind of choose in either smoother and rough texture from the finish treatment. So this is a typical kind of arrangement you see the retard, sand brust, acid etching, and polish. The retard is of course very love texture, and the polish is smoother texture. You need to be an understanding of the spectrum. Sand brust, you can use the sand brusting over the retard. You can still see the aggregate, but still you can just get in the very smooth texture. But when you have in the chemical treatment, which is the acid etching, you can get in the much smoother texture, almost avoid the retard, which is the love texture you can get in from the outside. The polish, so when you add in the, some more about the polishing treatment over the acid etching, you can get in a much smoother and sometimes you can get in the more refracting finish you can design. So this is an understanding different between the retard, the sand blasting, acid etching and polish. And then you can deciding about your finished concrete material basically from the, these four different category. Okay.